Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be decorating my kitchen for Christmas for this holiday season of 2023. I'm going to be giving you tons of new ideas for practical decor for your kitchen. And I'm also going to be sharing how I design my spaces, especially for the holidays. If you enjoy it, please subscribe. And without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. Well, I'm gonna start with a small haul of things that I got for my kitchen, and I'm gonna let you know how I designed the space that I'm going to be decorating in my kitchen and how I came up with the things that I needed. I guess it's a tip so that you don't overspend or overbuy things. So I did get a variety of stems, got a couple of these, just a couple, and they bring a lot from Michael's with the berries. Then I got these that are a little bit more loose from Michael's as well, and I am I'm going to try to recreate a garland with these which was actually cheaper than to get the actual garland plus I needed something shorter than a garland then I found these right here that I want to use to decorate uh, some garlands that I'm gonna place on top of my cabinets or at least that's the plan and then these are going to be for that function as well I also got a couple of those small Christmas trees. They were pretty affordable, $5 each, and I really love how they look. Like the stamps are so pretty, and also really love the light tan shade on the vase. So got a couple of these. Then probably the biggest investment was this sign. I needed a large, long sign. This one, I think it was $25 at Michael's, which with the 50% off, I didn't consider it a bad deal. I love this sign. I know I'm gonna use it for many years to come, so that's why I decided to go with it. Then I also got those um, ball ornaments, also from Michael's, great deal. I think these were $15, sorry, that's like all against the light, but $15 for 50 pieces, so that should be more than enough to decorate a couple of garlands on top of my cabinets. I also got these three canisters from Kirkland's. These were also at a great deal. I actually talked about them more on my Kirkland's shop with me and haul. I share them in that video with pricing and details and everything. And then another great thing I found was this Letters to Santa mailbox from Michaels as well. And this one, I think it was $15. This one probably was the best deal I can find on a mailbox. And I knew I needed one because I'm obsessed with them and I still don't have one for Christmas. So I got this one in brass and then you can open it like this. It has some magnets but it's awesome because you can actually put your letters there even the mail what I'm gonna use it for is the mail that I accumulate in my kitchen I try to be on top of it but since I take care of it once a week I can just put it here until it's time to take care of it for that week so that I don't have any papers going around so great function for that so that's my little haul for my kitchen this year and this is how I came up with a plan as to what I needed I don't know if you can tell but this is actually a drawing of that area of my kitchen right there so I kind of figured or kind of draw what I wanted in there how I wanted things and then in this kind of sketch I put numbers on each one of the elements that I was gonna be using and then I listed those out and then I put a star on the things that I already had and then I had a shopping list which I did end up getting a few more things but for that shopping list I try to search for the best deal so that's exactly how I like to design my spaces sometimes I do this in my head and some other times I like to put it in a sketch like this just to make it a little bit more structured and easier. And then this right here, I got my ring light right there, but this right here is going to be that part of my kitchen, which is also going to be decorated with, again, things I have, things I already have, and I just gave you kind of like the sneak peek of what it's gonna look like. area I have two heights in my kitchen island as you can see my bar height and my counter height I am going to leave the counter free of all Christmas decorations and I'm gonna concentrate it on the bar area of the island and I'm gonna do so by mixing 
red, white, and green, and some natural tones of wood. I knew that I wanted red in my kitchen this year. I always do, especially in this kitchen, which has a lot of cool tones going around. We painted this entire house in white, and so on top of that, my cabinets are white, and then the countertops are that really, really dark granite, which I don't love, but I have to work with it. So I figured I would do a lot of color contrast in this kitchen for this Christmas decor. And this is what I'm doing here. I added this combination of elements with that Letters to Santa mailbox. And the purpose for that is to hide my mail that I'm not ready to file yet, which I love it. I love that it's a functional piece of decor and right next to it i place a couple of mini christmas trees which i'm making sure that those stems are opened unfortunately because the way that these were packed the upper stems are kind of twisted but i'm just gonna have to work with it this is the cooking area and i'm gonna start by wiping down all the surfaces in here. It was already clean, but I like doing it once more before adding decor. Traditionally, I don't like overcrowding my countertops with decor. This is something I talk about in every video that I'm decorating my kitchen, but I've come to realize over the years that if I try to decorate up around my kitchen items, like perhaps my kitchen knives or my utensil holder with utensils, sometimes or even with time, it can really start to create some clutter even if I didn't plan for it. So this year I figured, okay, it's either the kitchen items or the decor. And because I managed to find space in my kitchen cabinets to put away my kitchen stuff, then I decided to give the decor a try. Let's see how that works this year. Let's see if with time it starts feeling like clutter. But essentially I like this Joshua Weissman book. Me and my husband are huge fans. And so I wanted to put it on site just so we remember to use it. We just got this book in the mail and we love his recipe. So I am putting it in a stand with some details for Christmas, the trees, the cutting boards that I really like. And as you can see, I still have plenty of space to do some prepping here with food. I am not interfering with my counter space, which is not a whole lot anyways. And then on this side, I figured I would go with this really light color vase and these stems that have a pop of red, which brings a lot of contrast to it. Now, sometimes it's not about the variety of stems that you use to create an arrangement like this. Sometimes you just need a high volume. So instead of using one stem, I went with two. It looks fuller. It was super easy and simple to create. The next area I'm going to be decorating is going to be my coffee area. And I only have an espresso machine. My Keurig broke and I just haven't been making Keurig coffee, but I still have my Nespresso. I use it every day. I'm a big coffee drinker. And for this area, my inspiration came from Kirkland's when I found those canister houses. I love them, but usually they would be very neutral for me. I thought, however, that with these countertops, they will contrast really, really well. However, I did need to figure out how I wanted them set up in the area. So I first tried with these flock trees that you see in the back. I figured I didn't have enough of them, so I decided to change them for the green ones that I have right here because I have more of them. Now on video, it seems like the trees are not that noticeable with the dark background, but in person they are, especially with the sunlight. And I truly feel like the houses were in like a forest or something, or better said in a neighborhood with pines in the back, which is so, so cute. So I'm filling up the first house with my Nespresso pots. The second one, I'm going to fill up with my tea bags that I drink every night. And then once we get a new Keurig, then I'll fill up the third one with the K-Cups. And that's pretty much it. But I did feel like they were missing something, so I went ahead and placed them on this wooden cutting board. It's a little bit small for them, but it's working. And I was just really thinking they look so adorable, like a cul-de-sac in Christmas. 
but I was needing a little bit more color so I added this candy cane tree from Walmart from a couple of years back and then on the other side I placed a snowman and as I edit this footage I don't know why I didn't add lights to the Christmas trees in the back I'm probably gonna do that down the line but I think that's the touch that it needs so far I'm loving how my kitchen is turning out but we're not done yet so when this kitchen was designed, they left that entire space up to the ceiling. They placed, you know, cabinets that are probably standard size, but I don't know if it was just back in the day, they just didn't bring it up to the ceiling, which is what you would ideally do if you're designing a kitchen. So now it's, you know, everybody who has lived here, and I know because I've seen pictures from the previous listings, they always decorate that area with things and, and whatnot. And I have not figured out what I wanna do in that area yet, but I did know that for Christmas, I was going to have to add things in there. And originally, I wanted to add that Merry Christmas sign that I showed you earlier in the video, like on the wall but I just don't think it's gonna be large enough. So let's see what I can come up with and hopefully it'll turn out for the best. So first thing, I added these mini Walmart trees. They come in a set of two. I'll try to link them down below for you all because they're still available. I bought them like three years ago. They're pre-lid and usually I will add them into my front porch, but this year, I just needed to do something about this dead space in the kitchen and I figured these will look good in here. And these actually helped me balance out the sign that I wanted to place because had I not added these, then it would have looked just not complete. It would have looked like short and really small for the wall. So they really did make a lot of proportion in there. And you all know I'm always going to try with my command strips to hang something off the wall. But I have to say, this was the biggest fail of this video because not only the sign did not stay on the wall, but I wasted so many of these command strips, which are not cheap. And I was pretty mad about that when I was doing this. And I tried, I tried to replace the command strips. I tried so many things for this to work and it just did not want to stay. You're going to see it right there falling off the wall. So finally, I just caved in and nailed the wall. And you know what? It was so worth it. Plus, if you are cooking and dealing with hot stuff, the best thing you can do for safety in the kitchen is making sure that this is stable in the wall. And the command strips were just not giving me that confidence. So I'm so happy I went in with the nail. It looked really good. Probably when I'm taking down my Christmas decor, I'm adding a different kind of sign in there just so that wall does not look so empty. So it's okay to have the nail. I don't know if you'll remember this hot cocoa bar sign that I created in partnership with Cricut back in 2021. I still love it and I wanted it to have a space in this kitchen. So I placed it on the other set of upper cabinets. I added those trees and I kind of improvise with that wreath because I love the wreath I just didn't have anywhere to put it so there's that then of course this kitchen is not my Christmas kitchen if it doesn't have any wreaths on the cabinets so I'm gonna go ahead and add them and I've explained this method in the past but what I'm doing is I'm adding a command hook upside down on the back of the cabinet simple as that and then the ribbon is holding from it towards the front now you have to make sure that you do buy the command hooks that will hold the weight of your wreath these are mini wreaths so I think I bought like those that will hold three pounds or so and I'm not adding wreaths to every single cabinet I did it with the cabinets on top of the microwave, on top of the refrigerator, and then in this area, I'm only going to do it in every other cabinet because I feel like if I do it on all the cabinets, it's going to be a little bit much. And can we talk about the garland that never happened? Well, I decided to desist from that project because I did feel like it was gonna be a little too much, but don't you worry those are still going to get used in a different project in my house 
Now, do you remember this wreath that I decorated myself back in Texas? I placed this on my kitchen hood and I remember on that video this was super popular. Well, it's still here. I decided not to change it because I still love this wreath. So all I'm doing is fluffing up the bows, which of course got smashed when these got packed. The Feliz Navidad ornament that this has, if you remember, it fell off and one of you actually recommended me this year to paint it gold just so it has a little bit more contrast against the green wreath because that Feliz Navidad is black so you can't really see it that much and I thought it was a great idea I just don't have the gold paint so I am going to leave it as is it is a little bit more noticeable in person as well and I did not remember this was a pre-lid wreath, which was so beautiful to just have it lit up for a second. Unfortunately, I don't have a plug near where I'm gonna hang it. So I am going to have to figure something out down the line, but this is going to go in my door that leads to my laundry room. Merry Christmas, baby. Rain is coming out to play. The last perfect touch for this Christmas kitchen is going to be this set of kitchen cloths that my mom actually got for me in Home Goods and she picked them out for me while I was filming a video for you all and I love them. So I knew they had to be part of this kitchen. Putting on the show for everybody To give them a smile that lasts another year There's something that happens when sleigh There's a ring in the distance And we have made it to the end of today's video. I really love how the kitchen turned out, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let me know if you grabbed new ideas or learned something new today. Thank you so much for spending time of your day watching this video. If you haven't already, I would love it if you could subscribe. And without any further ado, I really hope I can see you in my next one. Bye. Merry Christmas, baby.